On September 19, 1902, a deadly crowd stampede occurred at the overcrowded Shiloh Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. The congregation was arranged as part of the National Baptist Convention, which is an association of African American Baptists in the United States. This particular convention gathered to hear an address from great American educator and public figure Booker T. Washington, who discussed the tribulations faced by the black community that were prevalent at the time. In a matter of seconds, however, the uplifting sermon escalated into a harrowing catastrophe. With a total capacity of 3,000 people, the Shiloh Baptist Church was quite large. Nonetheless, with an orator as esteemed as Booker T. Washington speaking, the church quickly met its maximum occupancy. Despite the church's pastor, Reverend T.W. Walker, trying to control the crowds by requesting the police not to permit further entry into the building, guests continued to pour in. Not only were all the seats taken, but visitors also occupied standing room near the entrance and down the aisles, anywhere they could to witness the address. The panic began at around 9 p.m., just after Washington finished his address to the congregation. Perhaps influenced by the sweltering heat in the packed building that late summer day, a heated dispute arose on the stage. Some accounts suggest it was a fight over a chair, while others state that it resulted from one man, a choir member, stepping on the shoe of another man, a lawyer from Baltimore, Maryland. In response to the argument, a woman seated nearby screamed, there's a fight. Chaos ensued. The woman's exclamation was mistaken for a cry of fire. Panic swept through the congregation. Everyone made a dash for the exit all at the same time, resulting in immediate blockage. Although there were six exits, they all headed for the main entrance, causing a massive jam. When those fleeing the front and middle pews hit a human wall in the back of the church, their sense of alarm deepened. The guests tried to push and shove their way through to no avail. As the hysteria intensified, screams echoed through the church. People climbed over pews and other occupants in the process. Some were observed literally trying to climb over the top of the heads of others who were evacuating. A minister on stage ran to the podium. In an attempt to calm the crowd, he repeatedly yelled, Quiet! The well-meaning minister only further incited the panic. His pleas were also mistaken as cries of fire. The terrified churchgoers now also screamed fire as they desperately charged the entrance. Scores of guests were shoved to the ground where many were fatally smothered. Apart from the first few to escape, the door was not the sanctuary the churchgoers had hoped it to be. At the onset of the rush, many people who were outside rushed the exit from the outside to investigate the commotion, creating yet another obstacle to individuals trying to escape. Far worse still, when guests began making it out the door, they were shoved by the mass of bodies behind them, with the floor level of the church being 15 feet above ground level outside, the visitors who made it out the door were thrusted head first down the church steps which sat between two brick walls on each side. As they hit the ground, they were given no chance to move before others came crashing on top of them. It was described the following day in heartbreaking detail in the Birmingham Post-Herald. The level of the floor is about 15 feet from the ground and long steps lead to the sidewalk from the lobby just outside the main auditorium. Brick walls extend on each side of the steps for six or seven feet and this proved a veritable death trap. People who had reached the top of the steps were pushed violently forward and many fell. Before they could move, others fell upon them and in 15 minutes, persons were piled upon each other to a height of 10 feet. This wall of struggling humanity blocked the entrance and the weight of the 1,500 persons was pushing against it. In all, 115 people died in this disaster, and many more were injured. Most died from being trampled or from suffocation from being crushed in the stampede. Fortunately, 
In the very beginning of the event, two men were able to escape the building and seek help, so the response was swift. The fire department quickly made it to the scene, along with more police officers and many neighborhood locals who volunteered to help. Doctors from all over the city came in to assist. As the ordeal completely overwhelmed the city's ambulance services, many victims were treated on scene by those physicians. Among the most disturbing tasks was sorting the piles of bodies at the bottom of the church steps, separating the deceased from the living. One particular survivor, Annie Bradford, sat with her legs pinned at the bottom of the pile for 30 minutes, witnessing doctors pronouncing those atop her deceased and taking their bodies away before she was able to be freed. After just one hour, the church had been mostly cleared of all but the deceased and severely injured. An article in the San Francisco Call the following day painted a vivid picture of the horrific aftermath. The sights which greeted the eyes of those who had come to aid the injured were sickening. Down the aisles and along the outside of the pews, the dead bodies of men and women were strewn and the cries of the maimed and crippled were heartrending. Though the church was cleared of survivors in only an hour, removing bodies of the deceased and injured went on until nearly 2 a.m. Bodies discovered inside the church were laid on pews while those collected outside were arranged in a nearby flower garden where families searched for deceased loved ones by candlelight. Immediately following the disaster, the Birmingham News created a relief committee to raise money for the victims of the disaster. They published their initial donations in the paper the day following, and finalized the donations and disbursements a few weeks later on the 2nd of October. For the deceased and injured, they raised a total of $802.66, which would equal roughly $25,000 in 2022. These funds provided much needed assistance for medical treatment and funeral expenses. Though many initially placed blame on the two men arguing at the front of the church, no one was ultimately found to be at fault. The Birmingham Fire Department's official position on the matter was that the disaster was based on unfortunate circumstances that were entirely beyond the control of human power. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. If you'd like to support my channel, use the link in the description to become a patron of my Patreon, or click the join button below to become an official member of my channel. Until next time.